This is the walkthrough video for PCTC 2020 2021 round two, question nine, folding terms. So in this case, we want to build up the sequence by following this algorithm. And then we will also want to keep track of the running total of 10,000 consecutive terms. And if that total matches our, one of our inputs, then we want to calculate the next term and print off that term as our answer. So this question isn't too difficult, nothing too algorithmic about it, but we just need to make sure we implement this properly. So the first thing to do is take in our two inputs. Let's call them num and target. Um, awesome. And now we need to now create all of the variables that we're going to be using for the rest of our code. So one variable we need is to keep track of the running total of our current set of 10,000 terms. We also need to keep track of um, the basically every term we've seen. Um, so let's call it C, and we're going to make that a set. The reason we're making this a set will become a bit clearer later, but you, I think you'll only get 8 out of 10 if you don't make it a set. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll come across that later. But essentially, seed will just store every single term we've come across so far, uh, which would be useful for um, part C, where it says that. Okay, and we also need to keep track of the term that occurred 10,000 terms ago. And again, that will become more obvious as we as we code. So let's just call it um, the terms are going to be equal to an empty list. Now we need to generate the first 10,000 terms. But before we do that, remember that we're given the first term. The first term is num. That was our first input. And so we can actually just modify all of these to kind of include that. So total is not equal to zero, it's equal to num. Seen is not equal to an empty set, is equal to a set with um, num in it. And since we now have kind of something, now that we have something in the set, we don't have to bother with that set notation or that that, that set command. Um, and terms, again, terms also has one term in it called num, so we can add that. So now we need to generate the first um, 9,999 digits because we only want to begin checking to see whether the, um, uh, the running total is equal to our target once we have 10,000 digits because we're looking for 10,000 consecutive digits. And so there's no point. It's like, it's like we have to separate our code between generating the first 10,000 and then beginning to generate more and checking them. And since we already have the first number, we only generate one minus, well, 10,000 minus one. So how do we generate a number? We, well, we just implement this algorithm. The first thing is to square the current term. The current term is called num. So to square it, we'll just multiply it by itself. Now we have to implement b. If the result is greater than a million, then it should be repeatedly folded. So while num is greater than or equal to a million, then we want to repeat the falling procedure. What is the falling procedure? We split the digits down the middle. Okay, so if you want to split something down the middle and treat this as like, well, we can't treat this as an integer if you want to like physically split it. We have to treat it as a string. So let's turn that into a string. And if you want to split it down the middle, well, we need to, we need to know how long it is in the first place. And so um, let's say length is going to be equal to uh, the length of num. But because you want to split it down the middle, the length itself isn't that useful, like the half length is more useful. So let's call that half, take the length and divide that by two. Um, and it says that if, that it says that these numbers will either be, when we split the bigger number, these two numbers will either be of equal length or the left-hand number should be one digit shorter. And then it gives us an example, which is that if you had one, two, three, four, five, six, that number would be split into one, two, three, and four, five, six. Whereas if we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that would be split into one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven. And the way we do that is by doing integer division down here on line 11, because this will round down. And if that rounds down, that means that we want that to represent the first number and, the, and, and everything else should just be the second number because this rounds down. So if there are seven digits like there are in this example, then we only want seven integer division by two, which is equal to three. We only want three digits in our first number from, our, from the first half of this, of this number. And then we want all of the rest to go in the second half of the number. And so the first half of the number is going to be num um, all the way up until half. Because remember, this is non-inclusive. So in, in the case of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this is equal to 3. And so num will only be 0, 1, and 2, and not 3, because that's, that's just how Python works. Um, and then the second number is going to be um, from half onwards. And this is inclusive because half is the starting position. So it's going to be 3 four, five, six, and seven, which is four, four digits, which is what we want. And what we want to do with those two numbers, we want to um, add them together. So let's add them together, but they're currently still strings. So let's convert them into integers like that. 
um, and what we want to do once we add them together, well, that's just going to be equal to num. So let's just reset num or set num to this new value of num. And so this is going to now keep on repeating until we have a number that's small enough, which is everything to do with section B, part B of the algorithm. Now part C says, if the number has previously occurred in the sequence, then add one until it hasn't occurred. So we can say, while num is in the scenes, in scenes. So whilst num is in the set of all, the, all, all of the scene terms, then we want to keep adding one to it. And then as soon as it's not in the set, then the while loop is going to break. Okay. Um, now we can kind of modify our variables, change our three variables and update them to the, to the new term we just calculated. So total, of course, has to increase because we now calculated a new number, a new term. Scene, to scene, we need to add our new number because we've, we've just found a new term and we need to make sure that we keep track of that um, for line 13. Um, and finally, we also need to add that to terms. So we can do terms dot append um, and num. Um, and <coughs> I think this is the point where I could talk about why we have a set on number four, because on line 13, um, we are checking to see whether an item is in a list. And crucially, this may occur lots of times, right? Like, they, they, like this while loop may run literally a thousand times um, every single time this for loop is run. Uh, and like, essentially, what I'm trying to say is this, this condition is going to be checked for so many times in the runtime of our program. And so we need to make sure this condition is efficient. Now, looking for a term or an element in a list in Python is incredibly inefficient. So normally that doesn't matter, but if your list is thousands of elements long and you're, and you're repeating this action tens of thousands of times, well, that is going to rack up and that's going to make our code too inefficient and we're not going to get 10 out of 10 in this, in this problem. So we use a set. Uh, the benefit of a set is that for some reason in Python, the way it's coded up in Python um, means that sets are way faster to search things for them. So if you ever have a huge, a huge list and you want to find something in that list, and crucially, you only really want to care about whether something exists or not. You don't care about the position because sets jumble up the position of all of your elements, but they keep track of all of them. Um, so if you, if you only want to check to see whether your element exists or not, you should use a set. But if you really care about at what point did my element exist, then a set's kind of useless. But in our case, we, we do just want to check to see whether a number exists in the set. And it's so much more efficient, like literally orders of magnitude more efficient to um, use a set as opposed to keep this as a list, like terms. <coughs> because this code will also work, but it would not give us 10 out of 10 because it would be too slow. So it would fail some of the test cases. Let's change that back to scene. Okay, so now we've generated the first 10,000 elements of our list. Um, now we can actually get to this part, which is that if our 10,000 elements are equal to our target, then we want to calculate the next term and put that out. So we could say, while total is not equal to target, so whilst we haven't reached our goal, let's keep on calculating new terms. And the new terms code is to all of this. I'm not going to copy that because that's going to get really messy. So let's just create a function called def uh, next term, put number in it, um, paste that in, make sure indentation is right. And in this function, we can return num. Now in the function, we're, we're modifying the variable total, the variable c, and the variable terms. And these are all variables that are defined outside the function. And therefore, we need to make sure that they're global, um, just to make sure they modify correctly, like that. Um, awesome. I'm actually not sure if you need this line in this specific case. I don't think you would. Um, so if you don't understand what this line does, then it, you, you may still get away without having to use it. Okay, so we need to now fix our for loop because we've just removed all the code. So we're going to say num is equal to next term num, and we essentially just keep on repeating this loop. Um, to continuously generate new terms. And the same thing down here, we want to continuously generate new terms. Except that we now have a caveat, which is um, our total, our running total, should only ever be the last 10,000 numbers. It shouldn't be every single number we calculated so far added together. It should only be the sum of the last 10,000 numbers. Um, so it was fine currently, like as, as it is, it's fine currently to calculate the first 10,000 because, well, you want 10,000. But as soon as we start calculating the 10,000 first number, the 10,000 second number, and so on, now, we've ha now we have extra information or extra terms added to our total variable, and we need to remove them. So as we keep on calculating a new term, um, our range shifts from, for example, range 0 to 10,000, from range 1 to 10,001, then range 2 to 10,002. And so we want to keep on chopping off the 10,000th last number. 
So we only have the previous 10,000 numbers stored in total. And so to do that, uh, let's say from total, we want to take away a uh, number that was 10,000 ago, which is always going to be terms.pop0. So we're going to keep on popping the first or the leftmost element from our terms list um, every time this is run. So the length of our terms list is only ever going to be 10,000, right? It's going to get up to 10,001, and that's when we pop it. That, that, that's when we remove the first, uh, the, the first element from that list, because that's, that's the term that we don't care about. But it is the term that we need to ensure that we remove from total. And that's the entire point of the terms list on line 5. The whole point of this list existing is that we can do what we do on line 29, which is remove it from um, our current running total. Okay, so now we've done all of that. This while loop will now break automatically when we've reached our target. And once we've reached our target, what we want to do, we want to calculate the next term. Um, and just so you know, the, we want to calculate the next term because that's what we want to output. Um, so what is the next term of the original sequence immediately following the terms that we used in the total? So we calculate the next term, and then is that, as that is just our final answer, we might as well just print it off to the screen. Submit that, and hopefully get 10 points. Nope, time limit exceeded. Um, okay, where have I been inefficient here? Um, I don't think I have, right? Um, so there's going to be a logic error that I made somewhere here. Um, num is equal to int num half int half. Okay, so this file is definitely correct. Um, whilst num, oh sorry, <laughs> yeah. So I'm first whilst num is seen. Obviously, num is never equal to seen. Like is is basically just saying equal to. Um, we want to say whilst num is in seen, not whilst num is seen. Uh, that's just a basic error. Um, hopefully I didn't confuse you earlier when I made that typo and you were thinking through the code. But yeah, that now gets us 10 out of 10. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully this now makes sense. Um, and I'll see you next time.